there, I'm board certified professional organizer, Kathy Burns. I'm really glad you're here. This podcast is designed for busy entrepreneurs just like you who want to take better control of your business and move forward with less stress and more success. If this is your first time listening, then thanks for coming. The Organized Energized Podcast is produced for your enjoyment and show notes are found at thepodcast.organizedandenergized.com. Come back often and feel free to add this podcast to your favorite RSS feed or iTunes. You can also follow me on Twitter at Organized Energy and Facebook. All links are in the show notes. Now let's get into the show. Hi, everyone. This is Kathy, and we are back on the Organize and Energize podcast. And today, I'm so excited. I'm going to wow you because I'm going to show you how to wow your audience and connect with them with my guest, Marla Press. Actually, she's going to be the one that does that. So Marla is the founder of Speakers on Fire Academy. She's a public speaking coach, a life coach, and the art of presence trainer. Mm-hmm. We all need better presence. She coaches you to create a bigger impact by building your wow factor and your connection to the audience so that you can magnetically attract more clients and wealth. Don't we all want to be magnetic? Yeah, that's the whole thing. We want to attract people to us. So Marla's mission is to help you speak so that people will listen. She offers elite speaking programs, boot camps, one-on-one coaching. Her unique exercises help beginner and experienced speakers transform immediately. So guess what? You're in for a surprise because Marla is an international speaker. She's an author with a degree in psychology. She's marrying psychology with speaking. And this is important. We're going to jump into it right now. So let's go. Let's talk to Marla. Hi, everyone. As I promised, we're here with Marla Press, and you're going to love this interview. Everybody needs to be a speaker, and she's going to show us how to do it and introduce the wow factor. So hi, Marla. Thanks for coming on. Oh, I'm so excited to be here, Kathy. Thanks for having me. Oh, for sure. For sure. You know, we all need to speak, and we all need to learn how to speak, which is why I really wanted to have you on this 100th episode of my podcast. (laughs) Wow. Congratulations. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm so excited. And you're the perfect person to be on the show. So thank you so much. Mm. Yeah. Okay, Mm. Marla. So let's get back to the beginning of it all. You were in psychology. How did you start and what happened with your journey to lead you to where you are as a founder of the Speakers on Fire Academy? Yeah, I tell people and and probably a lot of listeners and people watching out there are going to feel this. It was a zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. It was definitely not a straight line. Oh, my gosh. A lot of zigs and zags. But um, yeah, I was always fascinated with psychology and human behavior and also fascinated by things that science can't explain because I had a, a really strong intuition and I still do. But I was, I had visions, I had out of body experiences, I had all this weird stuff happen that you just can't explain in words or with science. And so I was fascinated by that. And also growing up, I had experienced a lot of trauma and I didn't speak up about it ever. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was actually I I am an introvert, believe it or not, I'm an introvert. And that just means I really need my my time by myself to re-energize, but I also love being with people. So, but being an introvert and being kind of shut down as a kid was not a good combination. And I didn't have hardly any confidence, even though I was extremely intelligent and really talented. I won awards for all kinds of things. I graduated high school early. I did a lot of stuff, but the confidence wasn't really there. And I didn't speak up until much, much later. Yeah, you know, that's interesting. I think a lot of children with trauma uh, develop a higher psychic ability uh, because they, they, they kind of need to know what's coming around the corner before it comes around the corner. So they start developing that skill. I mean, I think we're all psychically gifted, yes. but I think we develop that even more when we have to, right? <laughs> That that is such a good point. Yes. And that that is true. I think some of us are just more in tune with it just naturally. And then some of us develop that almost as a coping mechanism, like you said. So it's amazing. And I, I use my intuition in my work and people say, how did you know I needed that? I'm like, well, yeah, I just know. And, and, and how did she know? Yeah, I know. But 
you know, I don't do, um, I work a lot with energy because I think it is extremely important to master your energy. And it's something that we're responding to each other constantly on an energetic level. It's it's not the words we say, that's 10% at the most of communication. It's 70% your energy, which is a combination of your, your body language, your facial expressions, your passion, your confidence, all those things that are not the words you say. And it's really, really important. So we'll, we can talk more about that in a minute, but to the story, you know, it, it, it's really important to me to help people speak, speak up and speak so people listen. Because when I first started speaking up, people still weren't listening. So I had to learn, yeah, yeah. And, and that's, that feels really bad. So, and I know a lot of people out there can relate to that. I know, I, I mean, everyone at some point in their life has some of these things happen, right? Some of them, mm -hmm. some of you, it's more traumatic than others. Some of them is just, you know, it's just kind of daily life where someone didn't listen to you. It could have been a spouse or a coworker or your kids <laughs> you know, or whatever, right? But it's, mm -hmm. When you're when you're building a business, it's especially important that you're being seen and you're being heard. And there's so many ways that people hold back on expressing themselves. And it's because of a lot of childhood things or or maybe it's, you know, you were in your 20s or 30s and you got messages about your message and whether, you know, whether it was important or not, and whether you were important. And so these stick with us. And yeah, do you think that's yeah. do you think that's why you went into psychology, you know, uh that you decided that was your major to kind of figure out what's going on with this and and get into your own headspace, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And the truth for so many psychologists too is that they go into it to yeah. fix themselves first and then they help everybody else. And and some people, you know, they we won't get into that. That some people don't even fix themselves, but they can still help other people. But yes, absolutely. I was fascinated with it. And also that, you know, it was it was partly just to heal myself. So that took a while. Yeah. And then I got into speaking. It, it's funny because even though I was an introvert, I was always on a stage growing up. So I started out as a dancer. Yes. And I would perform at age nine in front of hundreds of people as a dancer and and then eventually got into a dance company and and performed a lot love dance and modern dance not ballet it's too structured for me but but modern dance i love and um and i still you know try and dance every every chance i can get and i was also in a lot of musical plays because i just loved the theater and so i was in a lot of plays and i i was a performer but I wasn't connecting to anyone. And mm -hmm. that was a huge pivot point for me and why I'm so passionate about teaching this now, because it was a big pivot from performing on stage and being this kind of energy and being funny and having a magnetic energy that can be high energy at times. You, you know, you want to be entertaining. You want to perform to some degree. That's exciting and captivating. But you also have to give people that connection because we crave connection more and more and more than ever. We crave that. And to feel like the person that's speaking is validating you and listening to you and your story is their story. And being able to have that connect, that human connection is so, so important. So I had to learn how to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, the attractor factor, you know, that's the most important thing. Do you, do the, does the audience know that you understand them? Yeah. Does the audience understand you and why you're there? And, you know, having that two-way conversation, I think could even be just, as you said earlier, just the physical uh, bearing of yourself as well has a lot to do with that when you're on stage. So, um, yeah. yeah, I love that you said two-way communication because a lot of speakers go out there and they have great messages, great information, and they just want to give, give, give. And that's not communication. Communication is two-way. And so even like now, I can't see 
all of you watching and listening out there. I can't see you, but I feel you. I imagine who you are and I have the intention of connecting with you, which is completely different than just wanting to give information. It's about receiving and giving. And that is communication. I love that. So the people who are listening out there, what do you feel is there is when it comes to speaking or stage or presence, what do you feel is their biggest fear that they're up against right now? And how, how would you advise them to, uh, to remove all that crap off the shoulders and move forward? <laughs> Yeah. all that crap all yeah. that crap yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. the head speak you know it's the head speak uh, yes right. exactly so you know public speaking is still the number one fear that hasn't changed for decades it is the number one fear why because it is vulnerability it is putting yourself out there expressing who you are and risking rejection and that's really hard for a lot of people. And how we get over that is, you know, I know some speaking coaches say, oh, well, your mind doesn't know the difference between excitement and fear. I don't, I don't buy that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to some degree, physiologically, that may be true, but I don't like to fool the mind. I like to get the heck out of the mind. Yes, so, this, this. Yeah, our minds are cluttered. And Kathy, you're so good at helping people declutter. Your mind is cluttered. And getting out of your mind is the best way to communicate because you have your to-do list. You have your critical mind. You have your voices saying, you know, this is what happened before. And how does that relate to right now? And this is what could happen because of what's happening right now. And your mind is, you know, it's just cluttered. And we're bombarded with information these days, even more than ever before. We're in this information age where we're bombarded and it gets tiring. And so, <laughs> so I help people energetically, and this is not too woo woo, it's practical. I help you get out of your headspace and into your full body presence. I think that's what really sets you apart as a speaker coach, you know, from other coaches is that you're more dealing with the entire, because of your psychology background, for sure, it's such an asset because you're, you're, you're working on the whole mental chatter thing, not just, Hey, can I give a good speech? Can I, you know, it, it's like so much deeper than that. And that's what I feel really sets you apart uh, from other speaking coaches for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's the psychology, but the real magic of what I do is these exercises I take people through because that's where you transform and really change. I can say, oh, you know, have these affirmations that you're confident and you, you're an expert and you know what you're doing and you can do it and rah, rah. And that helps to some degree. But to me, that's just a first step because yeah. our mind is going to still come in and criticize and not fully believe it. And, and it's just not as freeing. It's freeing to get out of this headspace and into your heart and not just your heart. So a lot of speaking coaches will say, speak from the heart. Love that. But again, that's just the first step that I take you through. You speak from your heart and your gut. <laughs> Yes. And I call as it you were saying that as you were saying that I'm like the heart and then I'm like, really, it's gut. It's gut. Your heart, you know, your gut is where your heart is. So that's so funny that you said that. That's where my mind was going. I, I read your mind. You read my mind. I don't know. <laughs> both. We both have these powers. I'm sure of it. But yes, it's it's, you know, and, and I call it your home space. And when you get into that place, you know, I mean, there's more serotonin in your gut than there is in your brain. And this is a, a, it almost has a consciousness of its own. It's a very powerful place to bring your energy into and your awareness into, but most people have no idea how to do that. And that's why I don't discuss it. I take you through an exercise in the classes that I do. And that way you experience it and then it's yours and you get it but you got to experience it. I love it. That's so very important. And I think that we all, we ignore our gut, even though we have gut instinct, trust your gut. It's, you know, is human species. We say that all the time, but I don't think it really sinks in 
that the serotonins are in your gut and this is just the monkey chatter stuff like this is not really even who you are in my opinion but um let's let's jump back and okay so you went from psychology then you went into into a speaker and then to the speaking coaching well, yeah. tell me about some of the pitfalls or some of the things that happen as you went into the transition so a lot of people are listening are going through some type of transition that's why they listen to my podcast um they're transitioning from one place to another place and it's bumpy uh talk to me about your journey and and how you um overcame it and how you ended up where you are yes so I started out like I said as a performer and so when I started I actually did practice management consulting in the medical field and so I was on stage telling people about what I did and trying to get people to to use our services and I just had no no connection to the audience I was just performing and then I have this great information and I was entertaining but I wasn't getting clients and so what the pivot point for me was learning this art uh, at the time it was art of feminine presence ah. now it's the art of presence because we add men and so much of it is the same for men and women we we got to tweak it a little bit for men versus women or yeah. however you identify you know it, it includes everybody but it's it, this is just magic, this art of presence. It's amazing. There's 45, at least, different practices that are, you know, some of it's energy work, visualization, some of it's just role play. It's, it's all kinds of practices that changed my life. And I believe people learn through experience. They don't learn through, you know, intellectualizing about things. It's like, you know, trying to ride a bike. You can't read about it. You got to just get on there and do it, right? And yes. so this is what really helped me. I, I learned how to receive the audience as opposed to just project onto them. I learned how to master my energy. And there's internal energy, which is this home space. But then there's all this external energy. We have this, what I call a light globe around us. And there's different kinds of energy that you feed into your own light globe. It could be that you're shrunken. So your light globe is really close to your face and you kind of pull back your energy and people can't connect to you. Or you project it into the room all over the place, maybe down the block and <laughs> People still can't relate to you because it just doesn't seem real, even though it's it's kind of fun for a while. Yeah. Or your your light globe is diffused. You have no boundaries. And those are speakers that don't take a stand. They want to please everybody and they want to be liked. So they just go out there and they try and, you know, be a little of everything and they don't take a stand. They, they they're never edgy or controversial. And you might be liked and you might get so far with that. But the the drawback of that is that people, when they don't really know where you stand, they don't trust you as much. And it's better to have some people disagree with you than to have everybody like you, but not really know what you're about. Yeah, I think I think that's a valid point, Marla. You know, trying to be all things to all people is not even real. It's not even realistic. And I think that does dissolve the trust factor. And for those of you listening out there, if you are transitioning and you're thinking about, you know, what, what is my next step? What am I doing? Remember that you need to claim your niche and you can't be all things to all people. And just like Marla said, you need to, um, you know, be controversial, have people that don't like who you are because people are not going to like who you are anyhow. So you might as well separate that. Right. And then and then be the attractor magnet for people who uh, you can help and the people that you can uh, help them adjust their sales. And by doing that, you're helping yourself. So I think that's a really valid point. You can't be all things to all people. So find your lane, find your niche. Yeah. And another huge message I, I have in this, especially for anyone that's transitioning from one thing to another, is don't wait. I mean, I waited way too long to 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 finally come into what is my biggest passion. I had a day job that I held on to for uh, like almost 40 years. And <laughs> that's yep. a long time. And I could do it part time. So I was sort of doing my my passion, but I was always held back and always wanted to keep into the secure lane. And, you know, of course, some other life things got in the way and all of that. So some of that's understandable. But yeah. what I really want to encourage you out there is 
don't wait to live your life fully. Don't hold back. Unhook from whatever's hooking you. I can help you do that. I help people, you know, again, not verbally. I don't tell people by talking about your story to unhook. I take you through an exercise because I believe when it's indirect and when it's energetic versus verbally and intellectually, you really change. So don't hold back. Go for it. Come on. This is a new year. This is the time. And no matter what, it, it you know, it, it's it's a matter of having that confidence, but also just focus on what is your passion and what do you really want? And then how can you increase the desire for that? Because our desire is a huge part of what we make happen. Yeah, I, I am with you on that. So tell me a story about one of your clients. What's a, mo a memorable moment of someone that you helped go from like blah on stage to actually connecting with their audience? Yeah, uh, well, I could think of um, so many, but let's say um, this was interesting. One person had this incredibly inspiring story and she was she was such a powerhouse and such an amazing person. And she would talk about her story and it was more chronological. This is what happened and this is what happened, but there wasn't any emotion to it. <clears throat> and so she wasn't connecting to the audience and they weren't able to put themselves in her story. And I had to go over it and over it and oh. So what I do is I work very personally with people. I don't have big groups. I'll work with 10 people. That's it. I don't have bigger classes than that because I want every single person to transform and get a lot out of it. And that's what happens. So we worked on what the emotions could be, what they were, dove into the story and dove into her, her, um, her body presence and getting out of the head. Because sometimes what happens with speakers that have inspiring stories is they're afraid if they say it like they really felt it, they're going to fall apart on stage. Yeah. There's a real fear of that. And I know she had that fear. But what we did was, number one, really address the emotional pieces. And number two, this is really critical. You have to have the mindset that it's not about you. Yeah, yeah. But your story you're being emotional, not because you want to relive the story, but you're being emotional to give your audience permission to be vulnerable, to be emotional, to get into that because they're afraid of feeling their emotions. And a lot of us are, right? You don't want to get in there too deep because then you think you can't get out or you're going to cry in front of people, you are embarrass yourself. If you have the intention of it's about your audience and I'm giving them permission, you're not going to fall apart on stage. You're going to get into it because it's all about them. Yeah, I, I'm with you on that. And and to realize that, you know, our, it's not just our story. Uh, very many of, our, of the elements of our hero story is the same elements of someone else's hero story, just maybe different circumstance and different specifics. But it's the same thing where you're you're climbing the mountain and then you skid down a little bit and then you pull yourself back up and then and then you reach your triumph. So, yeah, I love I love uh, the idea of being vulnerable and realizing that the audience doesn't really want to feel vulnerable anyhow, but you can take them on the journey where it's safe. It's yeah. safe to do that. Absolutely. Because they know that you're, you're their guide. They have to feel like you're not the, you're not the hero. You're their guide. They're the hero. And that way they feel security and safe, like you said, which is so important. And then you take them on the journey of, you know, even if you have a 10 minute talk versus, you know, several hours or an hour, you still want to take them on the journey to get them from that place to hope. Yeah. So that's how you would end your talk. You want to have the hope in there, but first they have to feel their pain and know that that's where they're at and that they want to change. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So as we mentioned at the top of this hour, uh, the top of this podcast, it's my 100th episode. I'm going to celebrate. And I, I'm asking everybody, how do you celebrate? Like, what do you do when you have that big, huge thing that you want to just applaud yourself on? Uh, do you do anything specific, Marla, that you do to celebrate yourself? Go dancing. All right. <laughs> of course, of course you could. 
<laughs> I mean, I I'd love to celebrate everything. My YouTube channel is called the the celebrated YouTube channel, although I just changed it to Speakers on Fire Academy. But I I think celebrating is so important, right? And celebrating the small yeah. wins, not just the big ones. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And yeah. you know, and sharing with friends, I think, is you know just putting it out there that that you've done this and and telling you know friends and family, I think, is huge also. And, and I think it's so important to celebrate. I mean, I spent years not celebrating anything, not feeling that, you know, I just like, okay, did it, moving on, did it, moving on, mm -hmm. like that kind of that mm -hmm. machine thing. So now I'm, you know, stopping to savor. That's why I add that into each podcast just to find out how people do it. And of course you'd be danced, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in my classes, what, you know, cause I teach group speaking classes in the classes, the very first thing we do is we listen to a song and the very, cause I think music changes our state. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I want people to drop whatever happened that day and just be present. And so the first thing is to do a song. The second thing we always do is talk about our celebrations for the week. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Um, so what's your favorite organizing hack? You know, I have to ask this being a pro, pro organizer, I know you get a lot done in a limited amount of time. So how do you hold it together? And do you have a favorite thing that you do to keep yourself organized? Okay, I need help with this, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Because you're an artistic, creative woman, girl. <laughs> exactly. I am very big picture oriented. I am very, very creative. And I, you know, I've always had an excellent memory. So I'm used to keeping a lot in my mind. Um, but this year, uh, 2023, let's say, I really got a lot better at organizing, at, you know, keeping records on, on, um, on online and then I'm um, having a whiteboard where I've got my you know a couple of to-do lists so I have a huge to-do list on my phone on my calendar but then I have the really important things that I just want to be looking at all the time on a whiteboard so they're physically there for me to see and another huge thing is just getting out of this mind space and doing a sort of a it's almost like a meditation to 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 move your energy out of your head because when you clear space, then so much more opportunity comes in. And so that's really the biggest, biggest magic that I use is to clear some space by moving the energy out. Yeah. My, the original company, my original company, uh, 19 years ago was called add space to your life. And, you know, yeah. space is so vital and so important. And I think that's a, a morning clearing session with my brain is how yeah. I, uh, how I help hopefully get more, how I helpfully help myself get more done is to have in that clear mind space to begin yes. with. Yeah. And, so important. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I love that you put stuff on the whiteboard. You know, I would recommend you put only three things on the whiteboard each time, just three. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that will keep you from being into the overwhelm. But I love, I love what you're doing with that. And the whiteboard, it helps a lot of people because again, visual artistic creatives, right? What are you going to do when you're, you know, as artistic creatives, we're visual, we're tactile. Yes. So if you could turn back time and tell your 18 year old girlfriend self uh, some, some tips, what would you, what would you tell her? A couple of things I would say, you know, go with your heart and your passion, because I've always wanted to do something creative. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a novelist. I wanted to be a choreographer. But my rational brain or who knows, my peers and parents said, no, you have to get a real job. And you know what? These creative jobs are real jobs. Mm -hmm. But it that wasn't the thinking back then. Everybody went to college. Now, not everybody goes to college, but you had to go to college. And, you know, I, I got a degree in psychology, but I didn't learn much there. You know, everything I learned about psychology was my self-study about, you know, energy work and about NLP and about different types of psychology that are more alternative ways because I think they're much more powerful. And I also studied... Uh, neurobiology and and I love the you know the way the brain works and learning about that but yeah it's you know you want to be a writer be a writer yeah <laughs> you want to be a dancer be a dancer or a choreographer these yeah. it it might be a, a steep climb but so is everything else 
And so just go for it and don't waste, you know, 40 years of your life doing something that you think you should do, or maybe, you know, it's a better path for you. Go with your passion. Yeah, that's fantastic advice because we all try to fit into cookie cutter images of what our parents want. I know my sister was a phenomenal artist and they told her she couldn't, she couldn't be an artist, that she needed mm. to get something practical, you know, become a respiratory therapist, become a, you know, do something that's practical where you can make money so you can support yourself. And it's like, oh, you know, she was such, I just saw that squashed. And I look at her photography now and I'm like, oh my God, if she could have just followed that and went to art school, it would have been just Exactly. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So I yeah, think I, for a, in general, the society is a little more open about that now. There's, you know, people have a lot more choices and, you know, everything kind of goes, but that wasn't the way it used to be. And it's still sort of that way. You know, we're still encouraged, you know, to, to get a real job and then you could do that as a hobby or, or maybe you could do that and be successful later after you make a bunch of money. And it's not just do what you love and the money will follow. That's not true either. You have to work hard if you want to do something in the arts or something creative or be a speaker coach. You have to work really hard at it, but you can do it. Well, and you have to have you have to work really hard at anything. So why not do something that brings you joy, right? Yeah. Why not do something that that you get a you know you love to wake up every morning with the challenge of building whatever it is you're building. Um, yeah. So I I think the advice that you would tell your 18 year old self is something I'd like everybody out there to hear. Do what you love, do what you love and don't wait, right? You know, it took me 40 years to figure this out, this new career out, took you a while. You know, we don't, don't wait, stop, just, just do what you, you know, follow, follow your passion, follow your dreams. I love that. So I know you have a valuable free resource for the listeners here. Uh, what is it that you're offering the guests? Yeah, so I, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I have a free masterclass, but depending on, you know, when, the, the quickest way is just to do what I call a hot or not speaker assessment. And what that means is you can bring any part of your story, your pitch, your marketing message, your anything, your title, your program, bring that to me and we will make it sizzle. So it's, you know, and if you're, not, if you don't have one yet, but you're just thinking, maybe I want to be a speaker, then just bring your ideas. And we'll create something for you. And this is complimentary. So I love doing this for people and would love to help you. It's a hot or not eval. That's huge. That's a huge gift. Okay. So even if you guys don't have a speech out there, bring your ideas. We all have ideas of something that we want to tell the world. Bring your ideas to Marla and she can help you uh, define it and refine it and figure out if it's really uh, the, the great message for you. So I, what a great gift. We'll put the link down below um, and uh, everybody can, should jump onto it because it won't be there for a long, you know, forever. Uh, but jump onto it, especially if, even if you don't know if you have a message. I think that, you know, Marla would be great at helping you figure out what your message could be and might be that might make an impact on the world. So let's face it, we all are here as entrepreneurs to make an impact on the world. And the best way to make an impact is to share your message in a way that people will hear it. Yes. And with it and receive it. And then they will be You'll have that magnetic factor. So that's what Marla brings to the table. And I'm so, I'm so impressed with it. You do. And I'm so grateful that you're my 100th guest on my podcast. <laughs> How I said, 100%. I'm sorry. It's a hundred percent. I'm excited. Oh, I'm just, I'm just stoked uh, that you're my guest on this, this particular episode. It's so special to me. So is there anything that we should have discussed that uh, I didn't ask you that you, it's on your mind that you really want to tell the audience? I just want to say that your message matters. Mm -hmm. And even if you don't have your own business, just to learn these skills to be authentic, you know, it, it helps in your personal relationships to be more authentic and to be fully expressed and not subdue anything, not hold back that your message matters in every situation on any kind of stage. Yeah, isn't that the truth of it? Yeah. And know your message and know that your message is actually other people's thoughts as well. So you will resonate with the people that you resonate with. And when your message is succinct, you're that magnetic factor. That's what it's all about. And that's what Marla does with Speakers on Fire Academy. Woohoo! <laughs> ah!
<laughs> hey, yeah. Thanks for listening. And thank you, Marla, for being a guest. And until next time, get yourself organized and get yourself energized and get in the game and don't wait. Perfect. Thank you so much, Kathy. Absolutely. Until then. Hey, thanks for listening to this podcast. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you want to hear more, feel free to subscribe on the platform of your choice. Also, if you feel so inclined, I would truly appreciate a good rating from you to me. Have a stellar day.